Hello fellow problem solvers, so today we're going to be doing a problem from the Asia Pacific Math Olympia 2019 problem number one. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of 15 minutes, ideally 40 minutes, but not more than an hour and 20 minutes. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, I suggest you take 10 minutes and put your first ideas out on paper. So now, let's begin. So in summary, we have for every a and b in the positive integers, f of a plus b divides a squared plus f of a times f of b. Now the first thing that came to my mind here is plugging in a equals b. Namely, let's, that gives us f of x plus x divides x squared plus f of x squared. And now as you can see, this is of the form k plus l divides k squared plus l squared. And I immediately saw this as k plus l squared minus 2kl. So from here, what we get immediately is this is equivalent to x plus f of x squared minus 2x f of x. And from here we get f of x plus x divides 2x f of x. And now from here, my thinking was, let's get rid of the f of x. And what we get is we have f of x plus x. We know multiplying this by 2x divides this plus 2x squared. And now just subtracting this from this, we get f of x plus x divides 2x squared. Now before I give you the next couple of hints and big functional equations from the integers to the integers, problem solving philosophies, I invite you to take five to 10 minutes and figure out what would you do with this? How would you push the problem further? Like after this, what would you do? What would you do with A and B? So for me, the next step here was, well, this here implies for X equals one, F of one plus one divides two. And now because we're in the positive integers, this implies F of one is equal to one. And now we have that. Now further, I would just like plug in a is one here, and what I would get is one plus b divides one plus f of b. And now with this in mind, and knowing this, the first thing that came to my mind, knowing this and having this, is that plugging in x is a prime here, will really narrow down what f of x plus x can be. Namely, if x is a prime, then we have f of p plus p, divides 2p squared. Now this means that f of p plus p, because this is greater than p, is one of 2p squared, p squared, and 2p. Now, if the solution is f of x equals x, which is what seems like a solution, a plus b divides a times a plus b, then I would expect this to be true. And the problem solving philosophy here in general, maybe a heuristic more so than a philosophy for functions from the integers to the integers, is to work with prime numbers. Prime numbers are your incredible friend here. That is, they are your friend, unless you're trying to pr prove some sort of Goldbach conjecture equivalent. And now with this in mind, I invite you to take another five to 10 minutes and see what would you do with this. Here's what I would do. So I have these two facts and plugging it b equals a prime, I have p plus one divides f of p plus one. If I add p plus one, I have p plus one divides f of p plus p plus two. And this is true for every prime number p. This is why I say they are your friends. And now you know for every prime number p that this is either this, this, or this. And now we have cases. In the first case, f of p plus p is equal to 2p squared. So for some primes it can be this, for others it can be this, for others it can be this, or it can all be one. We don't know at this point. And if it's this, then we know p plus one divides 2p squared plus two. This is p plus one divides two times p squared plus one. Now we know p plus one divides p squared minus one because the, this is p minus one times p plus one. So it divides two times p minus one subtract this from this and you get p plus one divides four. So the only possibility is p is equal to three. This doesn't mean that for p equals three, we have f of three is plus three is equal to two times three squared, which is 18. This just means that if this is true, then p is three. So the second case, let's make it p squared. p plus one divides p squared plus two. 
Again, we do the similar thing. P plus one divides P squared minus one. Subtract, you get P plus one divides three. So if this is true, then it implies P is equals two. So now in the third case, if P plus one divides two P plus two, this is always true. So if this is true, then P is any other prime. And conversely, if P is a prime greater than or equal to five, then F of P plus P can't be equal to this. It can't be equal to this, so it must be equal to this, which means that f of p is equal to p for all p primes greater than or equal to 5. And as I said, prime numbers are your friends. Now let's look at the original. And before I do look at the original, I invite you here to pause for 10 to 15 minutes and see if you can solve the problem. Here's my next step. I have a, pro I have a value of f for some f other than 1. The other value was 1 plus b divides f of b plus 1, which is useful. Like this also gives us that f of x is greater than or equal to x for every single x, but I want to work with these prime p that I have now. So plugging in a equals p, you get p plus b divides p squared plus p times f of b, which is p times p plus f of b. Now for me, when does p plus b and p have nothing in common? Well, if p doesn't divide b, then these two have nothing in common. If x divided this and x divided this, that would imply x divides b, which would imply from here that x divides p, which would imply that b and p have something in common. So if p doesn't divide b, then the GCD of b and p is 1. And now, if this, then what we know is that p plus b divides p plus f of b. And now here, what you do is you subtract get rid of p because p can be any prime number which doesn't divide b then you have p plus b divides f of b minus b now take two minutes and figure out what this means so what this means is that because p is any prime number which doesn't divide b this is a constant right here if we let p vary be as big as we want it to be this thing here remains constant and the trouble is this can be any number, as a num not any number, but it can be as big as we want it to be. And this implies if f of b wasn't equal to b for some b, then by taking a prime that's bigger than f of b, 2f of b plus 2b, we would have that p plus b is greater than the absolute value of f of b minus b. But if that's the case, then it can't divide it. So it means that f of b is equal to b for every single b. And now the final thing we need to do is to plug that back into the original equation, namely to check if this f works. And the thing we get is that f of a plus b needs to divide a squared plus f of a plus times f of b. And this implies that a plus b divides a squared plus a times b. And this is true because a plus b divides a plus b. And that means we're done. The only function which satisfies this is f of b is equal to b. And as always, thanks for problem solving.